Hello, and welcome back to It's Tech Time. This is video number two of my Ansible Crash Course series. I know you are ready to get started with Ansible commands, but in this video, we're going to cover an important core concept first. We're going to go over OpenSSH. OpenSSH is pretty much the standard when it comes to remote Linux administration. It is what we use to connect to a Linux server to do different administration commands and tasks. And it is also what Ansible will be using to do its provisioning as well. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the basics of what SSH is and how to do some basic key management because that is very important when it comes to Ansible. None of the concepts we are going to be covering today are specific to Ansible, but it is important that you understand the basics of OpenSSH before we get into Ansible. So let's get started. We are going to take a quick look at SSH and how to manage SSH keys along with some extra tips to simplify the process at the end. So for our example, we get three cloud servers running, and I'll be SSHing into all three of them from my workstation. Now, if you've used a cloud server like I do, SSH should already be installed and active. But if you're using a, vir a virtual machine, or if this is a manual install, you may have to actually select SSH during the installation process. To see if it's installed, you can go sudo systemctl status SSH. And as you can see, it is installed on my workstation here. So now that I've made sure SSH is on and running on all of my servers and on my workstation, if you have not already SSH'd into your server from your workstation so that you can get that initial prompt asking you to confirm to add this host, you need to do so now. So what I've done here back at my workstation is that I opened up a Tmux session and then connected to each of my servers in a different window inside Tmux. Now for this video series, we're not going to worry about what Tmux is. I just used it so that you can see very clearly in my menu list down here below which server or workstation that I am, I am currently connected to and since I am using Tmos I can easily switch between them with just a click of a key and again the scenario is that I have my workstation here and I'm using Ansible on my workstation to configure one or more servers so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to server 1 and I'll run IPA it's gonna give us the IP address of server 1 so I'm gonna copy that and I'll go back to my workstation and I'll run SSA and I'll paste in that IP address and you will use whatever IP address you have on your side now by default Linux is going to accept the user who is running the commands if you don't specify a user. So I'm simply going to do SSH, this IP address for server one, click enter, and it's going to ask me to accept the fingerprint. And so I'm going to type in yes, because I trust the server. This is my server and click enter. And it, as you can see from the warning, it's adding the server to the list of known hosts. And now it's asking for my user password. I'm going to type that in and I see a welcome screen as soon as I log in. Just ignore that restart required message for now. I'll take care of that later. And now that we're connected, we simply hit control D and it would disconnect from our server and bring us back to the workstation. The takeaway from all this is that you should be able to successfully run SSH IP address of your server and connect successfully via SSH to your server. Let me clear the screen so you can see. I'll run SSH, and again, it's going to default to be Morgan's, and I'll paste the IP address for server 2 and hit enter. And since this is the first time I'm connecting to server 2, it's going to ask me if I want to accept the fingerprint of the server, and every server is going to have a completely different fingerprint, so keep that in mind. I'm going to type in yes to confirm, and so adding it to the known host, and then I'll type in my password and click enter, and now I'm connected. I'll hit control D to disconnect and go back to my workstation, and then I'm going to hit the up arrow to go back to my SSH command and click enter, just to show you that the second time I connect, I don't get that warning message. I just go straight to asking for a password the second time. I'm going to hit control C to cancel out of that. And so we were able to successfully SSH from our workstation to all three servers. And again, we wanted to make sure that this worked successfully because Ansible uses SSH by default to connect to the servers and run the playbooks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to strengthen our SSH connection by creating SSH keys. And an SSH key just simply makes it harder for somebody to not only have to guess your password, but they would also have to have a copy of your SSH key. And I'll show you how to do that now if you're not familiar with it. So right now, if we were to run ls-la against the .ssh folder, the only thing there is the known host file. And that was created when we made our connection to our servers. However, this is also the default location that SSH keys will be stored at once we create them. And since all we see in this folder right now is the known host file, then we don't currently have any SSH keys in this folder. But to generate one, it is very easy. You can simply run the command ssh dash key gen and so then we'll do dash t for type because we want to tell ssh which type of key we're going to generate and the type of key we want to create is ed25519 now it's beyond the scope of this video series as to all the different types of ssh keys that are out there and why this type might be better than another type but in summary the 25519 
key format is a more secure key type than the default and it also has a lot shorter key length as well which makes it really easy to copy and paste it onto other servers now the next option is optional dash uppercase c for comment and I personally like to add a comment or a note, if you will, to remind me what this key is being used for. So I'm gonna put in quotation marks, B Morgan and default, and close the quotation marks. And you can put whatever you want to there. So we're gonna press enter. And I get a message saying it's creating a public private key pair. And it's gonna say that it's gonna store it in the default location, which is slash home slash my username slash dot SSH. And it's gonna save it as ID underscore ED25519. Now, if you already got something in the dot SSH folder named ID underscore ED25519, it will override whatever you already have there. Earlier, we ran LS minus LA on the dot SSH folder, so we already know there's no SSH keys in there. So we can accept the default, which is perfectly fine in this case scenario, and you can do whatever you need to do on your workstation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the file path. I'm gonna put it in home, my username, dot SSH. And then since this is gonna be my B Morgan default, I'm gonna simply name this B Morgan underscore ID underscore ED 25519. So I'm going to click enter and it's going to ask for a passphrase now. Now a passphrase basically just makes this key even more secure because now not only do you need your password, you need an SSH key, but you also need to know the passphrase. And so I'm going to suggest you come up with a passphrase. I'm going to go ahead and type mine in now and hit enter. And it's going to ask me for the passphrase again to confirm it. I'll type it in again. Now some people argue against a passphrase because it requires you to enter it every time you use it. Now there is a way to catch the passphrase so that as long as your session is open, you only have to use the passphrase phrase one time and I'll get into how to do that later and once you have finished it gives you this cool little random art image here so now if we were to look at the SSH directory we now see an SSH key pair along with the known host now you may be wondering why you have two keys with the same name one with dot pub beside it this is your public and private key pair your public one has dot pub for public and your private has no dot at the end of it and a good way to think of it is kind of like username and password you can do whatever you want to with your public key in fact i'm going to cap mine right here it's basically the username going with private key you'll copy that to servers that you're going to you can post it publicly as now your private key is private you wouldn't want anybody to see that if it was to get out it would invalidate the public key and so these keys would be completely used now i'm going to go ahead and cap mine just so you can see what the private key looks like in relation to the public key and the only reason i did that is because right after i do these videos i'm going to be deleting these anyway and so they won't be useful anymore now if you look back up at the public key this part right here is the actual key and this over here is my comment that i added to it help me identify it and you can see what type of key it is here at the beginning and looking at the private key it's actually marked at the beginning of it that is private and at the end of it and it's also a good bit longer but this is just so you can see what they look like we have successfully generated an ssh key that we that we can use to connect to our servers and so now i'll walk through how to actually copy this key so i'll do ssh dash copy id uh, dash i to tell it which id to use and i'm going to say it's in my home directory under dot ssh now remember we're going to pass it the public key not the private so you do want the dot pub at the end of it and then the ip address of the server you want to copy it to and then you press enter and then i'll type in the password and press enter and it says that it went ahead and added the key and so if i go over to that server and do ls minus la of the dot ssh directory on the server in dot ssh there's a file called authorized key which was not there before and so if we were to take a look at that by catting the authorized keys file you see the public key that we just copied over and so for comparison I'll show you the contents of my public key again and so the SSH copy ID command simply copies the public key to the server that you direct it to so now that should be the same exact public key on the server from the workstation. Now, a little bit of advice for you. If you're able to SSH into a server, you could simply copy and paste that key in there yourself. So if I log into server two, I'm gonna change directory dot SSH directory. Now server two says that that's not there. So I can simply run make dir for make directory and dot SSH, hit enter. So now if I run ls minus la, see a dot SSH directory, and I'll change directory into dot SSH, do ls minus la again. And right now that authorized key file is not there. So what you can do since you're already SSH'd into the server is simply run touch authorized underscore keys. And what touch does is it simply creates a file with nothing in it. So if I was to run ls minus la, there's my authorized keys files. 
So if I go nano authorized keys and hit enter, it's an empty file called authorized keys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to server one and I'm gonna copy my public key from server one. I'm gonna go to server two and I'm gonna paste my public key and then I'll exit and save this. So now if I run cat authorized keys on server two, I see my public key. So now I'll go back to my workstation and I'll simply run SSH and then the IP address for server two. And it's asking for a password to unlock the private key. And what this is, is the passphrase that we created when we created the SSH key. So I'm going to type in my passphrase, click unlock. I've SSH successfully into server two. And I'll simply hit control D to disconnect. Again, there's two different ways to do it. You can simply copy it, or you can run SSH-copy ID dash I to indicate which ID you want to copy. In my case, it's going to be tilde slash dot SSH for my SSH in my home directory, and then slash B Morgan public file, my IP address for server three. If we were to SSH into one of the servers, we just copied our keys over. We're going to get asked for the passphrase to the key we created, and then we're instantly connected to our server. So copying over our pass keys successfully. And so I hit control D to disconnect. And so now we know how to create SSH keys and we know how to successfully copy them over to our servers. And we can see that it worked because when we SSH in after copying the key and asked for the passphrase to that key. So now we know that we can successfully SSH in, but we also need to create a key pair so that Ansible can successfully SSH. And that's what I'll do right now is create a key pair for Ansible. And again, this is optional, but I'm gonna do C for comment. And I'm I call this the Ansible key. So again, this is a key specifically for Ansible to use. So again, we'll press enter and it's asking us where we want to save the key. So we need to be careful because it's asking for the same default path. And so if you already have a key there, this Ansible key will override that key. And we don't want to do that this time. So what we want to do is we want to give it a different name. So we'll type in the path home slash username slash dot SSH. And this time we're simply going to name it Ansible since this key is solely for Ansible to use. We'll hit enter. And again, we're asked for the passphrase. Now this time for Ansible, I'm going to recommend that you don't create a passphrase. That way when you run an Ansible script, it won't get tripped up by it asking for the passphrase to the Ansible key. So for this, we'll just press enter. And again, we'll press enter again, and we get the random R. So if we do an ls minus la dot SSH, we now see an Ansible key pair. Now again, we're gonna wanna keep this Ansible key secret, especially since it doesn't have a passphrase, because eventually this Ansible key is gonna be very powerful. Right now, there's not much to it, but later on in the video series, there's gonna be a lot of power behind it. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna copy this key over to our service as well. So we'll just do ssh-copy ID. And again, we gotta target the file that we just created. So it's gonna be tilde slash dot SSH slash Ansible. So I'll put in the IP address for server one, hit enter. So you see it's asking for a passphrase. That's the passphrase to my SSH key. So I'll type in that passphrase and I'll hit enter. And it says that the Ansible key has been copied over. And I went ahead and repeated that to my server two and server three. And as you can see, I got a message back from each of them saying that the key was successfully added. So now if we were to go to any of our servers, change directory to the SSH directory, tap the authorized keys file, we now have my default public key and the public key for Ansible as well. So now we can test out that Ansible key file by telling SSH which key file to look for when we're SSH. So we'll do SSH for which identity file. And I'm going to do tilde slash for home dot SSH slash Ansible and then the IP address for one of my servers. And I was able to successfully SSH into the server without being asked for a passphrase because I used my Ansible key to do so. And that's basically what Ansible is going to be able to do. It's going to be able to connect to the server without being asked for the passphrase and run whatever commands or playbooks we tell Ansible to run. Now, yes, with our personal keys, we're going to be asked for a passphrase, but it's a lot more secure than your basic SSH key. And the Ansible key will only be used for Ansible tasks, nothing else. You shouldn't never use it for anything else. So remember, keep that Ansible key very safe. Again, if I disconnect from the server, and let me clear the screen, and just run SSH and IP address of the server without telling it, which key file to use, it's going to default to my personal key file and it's going to ask for a passphrase. But depending on how many times you end up doing this, it could become more trouble than it's worth to have to type in that passphrase every time. But thankfully, there's a way to catch that passphrase so that it will remember the passphrase while your SSH window is open. And so here's a little cheat to make that a little easier. We're going to do eval base dollar sign and then parentheses. And inside the parentheses, you're going to type in SSH 
dash agent. And an SSA agent is basically a process running in the background that can cache your passphrase for you. So that way, as long as you don't close your terminal window, you only have to enter the passphrase once. So now we'll press enter and it gives us an agent process ID number showing that it has started. So if I do PSAUX and then grip for 25464, hit enter, I can see that SSH agent is running in the background. Now that the SSH agent is running in the background, we can type in SSH-add, and it's gonna ask for my passphrase. Enter in my passphrase, click enter, and it says that identity has been added. So now if I hit the up arrow back to my SSH command, click enter, this time I'm not asked for the passphrase. So we get the convenience of not having a passphrase by this SSH caching the passphrase for us as long as the terminal window doesn't get closed. But you know what? That can be made even easier for it by creating an alias for the SSH agent. And the way to create an alias is by, in your home directory, typing in vi.bash underscore aliases and click an enter. And for you, it probably opens up an empty text file. For me, I already got I already got one line in here and it's a line that I add to, to every bash alias file I have on all my machines. And what I did here is I created two aliases. The first alias I created is sshb for sshbo. And then I run the eval ssh agent command. So I activate the ssh agent and I go ahead and tell it to add my ssh key. And all I have to do is type in sshb for bo. And while I'm in this file, I went ahead and created the alias for Ansible, SSHA for Ansible. And again, it's gonna run the SSH agent if it's not already running, and it's gonna add the Ansible SSH key. So I'm gonna save this and close it, and I'll run my reload command to reload the bash aliases files. And it tells me I have a syntax error. I forgot to put a quotation mark at the end of this one reload it and so if I run sshb again which is supposed to turn on the ssh agent and load my key I'll press enter and it's going to ask for my passphrase and it says identity added so now I can also run the ansible one by running sshA it says the ansible identity has been added so I don't know about you but to me just typing in sshb or sshA is a lot easier than having to type in that whole command there to load the ssh key and because we added it to this dot bash aliases file that you either already had or that you had to create. It's going to be a permanent alias on this workstation. And here we are at the end of video two already. We successfully laid the sum of the foundation that we are going to be using for the rest of this Ansible Crash Course series. And in the next video, we will also add to this foundation as well. In video three, we are going to set up a Git repository that is going to hold all of our code so we can get into the habit of using version control which is very important. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.